to move forward. Oh, sorry, I'll, uh, I'll move back and bring this end round. I meant to move, shouldn't I? Oh, sorry. It's just that we've taken a valuable space, you see. Yeah. We've more room for guns and knives now. And as your designated liaison officer, I thought I'd pop in and see how you're getting on. I know we're no longer actively pursuing the inquiry, but it's nice to keep in touch. Well, that's very conscientious of you, Sergeant Watts, have a seat. It's kind of about that famous story, and people are still talking about it, about the uh, middle-aged couple who pretended that the husband had drowned in a canoeing accident so they could collect the insurance money, and they didn't tell their children. And uh, then they went off to a foreign country and got caught when they, their picture turned up on, uh, on, on the internet. Uh, and it's very loosely, it's based, it's not, it's not about them, it's based on, on that, the idea of people doing that. And we've set this play in Liverpool, um, so they're really kind of familiar local characters, and uh, it's 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 a very funny version of that story. I remembered the I remember the story from the news, uh, and so when the writer Mike Gaiman sent me the script, uh, I was quite excited to read. Think, oh, this has been turned into a play. What a great idea! And then when I read the script, um, it was terribly funny, and also had potential to be developed into a very outrageous kind of physical, uh, farcical romp, uh, which is what we've got. It's, uh, and, and I just, I knew that there were great actors up here and I'd, oh, I'd wanted to work here for a while. And so it all just came together. Oh, please, you're mad. Are you mad? So good to hear her voice. She sounds unusual. How does she look? Unusual? Uh, well, you are tempted fate coming in here, Frank, if you all see it. It's only three days yeah. until I fly out, isn't it? Oh, oh God. What? I can't believe them, I'm an arse itself. Oh, well, have it in the shed, yeah. quietly. No, no, it's here this time. Oh, it's not. Uh, Rationalise uh, it. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, ventilating uh, again. Here. Yeah. 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 Doctor. Oh. They're reluctant to come out for the living, let alone someone with a death certificate. It's not a death certificate, it's a presumption of death. Oh, oh yeah. you're very pedantic for someone having a heart attack. I'm not known for comedy, I'm known for very serious roles, drama. Um, but every now and again I like to do something uh, which is light, light-hearted and fun, which I'm enjoying, yeah. They're a fa yeah, fun bunch of people to work with. The Calma Crystal, the director, I knew before because we worked together as actors uh, when he started off acting. And uh, so I only knew him as, a, as a, an actor. And then I, I know of his reputation as a director and he's one of the reasons I'm doing it because I like his work and the script, of course, and to work at the Royal Court. Listen, soon we'll be lying on a Caribbean beach. Oh, hot sun beating down on white powdery sand. A breeze rustling through the palms. Can you feel the sun on your face, Frank? I can feel it, though. Can you feel the warmth of the sand sinking through your bones as the tension just dissolves away? I can oh. feel it, though. Oh, shit. What? What, Arky? It's just pulled up. Shit! Shit! I'm not dying in the shed! The minute I read the, the script, to be honest, I kind of knew where Mike was coming from with her. Uh, and though Carl, the director, wanted her playing, you know, real daft as if to say, oh my god, um, how could anybody be this daft to think that they could get away with it? And so he's really encouraged the daftness. Um, so she has, she can. So she's endearing as well. We have to like her, and and I think we do, despite what she's doing, despite the fact that she like, she lies to her kids and she's, you know, doing a serious fraud thing. She drives the Sir first act, yeah, because I think it's very plot driven, and because it is about Beryl and Frank thinking they're getting away with it. We see a lot of her. Uh, however, the inspectors. Also, really have a, a you know a very significant part throughout the whole play. I like this because I think Mike Human writes really well for women, uh, actually. Because okay, would you know she's a bit daft, but they're headstrong, uh, and they're all the organisers, and I I like that. Hiya, mum. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just having a little break from sorting your dad's clothes. Out. Is there anything you want? Not those colours, no. Julie's got me wardrobe fully colour coordinated. In brown. You thinking about a holiday, are you? Eh, hey, what I'm thinking about it. Oh, I would love to go and lie on a hot beach somewhere, me, you know. <laughs> Julie wouldn't. Chester Sam makes her feel dirty. And not in a good way. <laughs>
<laughs> I can come with you. Well, as I said, I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. Keith is a bit of a mummy's boy. Uh, he tends to be a bit of a passenger in life. He tries, he tries to get involved in a lot of things and like people don't pay that much attention to him. He'll be the type of guy that goes to like a cocktail party and stands there in a group of people just going, listening to the conversation, waiting for a moment to jump in, but never quite knowing when it is. Uh, yeah, he's, um, he has a lovely wife called Julie, who he is literally whipped so much by. Like, he's so under the thumb, it's beyond belief. But, uh, but it's all okay because he's got his lovely dog, Benny, to get him by. So, um, yeah, that's, he loves Benny. Uh, yeah, that's just basically what gets, you get, that, that gets most to bed in the morning. Last time you guys saw me, I was doing Scouts of the Antarctic, where I was playing Jason, and he was in a similar scenario to Keith, where he was in a relationship where he was getting whipped all the time and getting told what to do and getting bullied. And yeah, I've ended up coming into Canoeing for Beginners, playing Keith, who is it, not a very dissimilar vote from Jason, but it's fun, I have a good time with it. <laughs> I best be off, alright? Well, I'll be back after work, but then I'm off out again, okay? Not like you. I'm, I'm sorry. I couldn't bear it. I had no idea you'd taken it so badly. Well, how did you expect him to take it? Just a few more weeks. We should go down the country, we'll tell them. But we should have told him from the start. No, we got his chicks off then. Come here. Frank, uh, played by John McArdle, is obviously he's faked his death um, for this insurance money with his wife, Beryl, who's played by Pauline Fleming. And me and my sister Carol, played by Angela Sims, um, are just just living life as you do when a parent would die. Like the funerals being arranged, there's been memorial services and stuff, and you're just they're just trying to get on with their lives and trying to put a bit of normality to it and just remember them in the right way with regards to sort of get rid of the memories that they don't want and keep the memories that they do. And all while this is going on is he's standing behind doors while they're talking about these types of things and like having an emotional response and getting upset about the memories that they've had about them in the past. So working on that in rehearsals, it, it's like, it is, it's, it's quite a traumatic thing what's going on, but then there's some serious comedy in it because it's just, a, you'd say it's a surreal scenario, but we know it's not because it's, it's happened, this has happened in real life, so. Yeah, and playing on like just literally out making it like so snappy, so as soon as one door opens, another one closes and vice versa. Um, playing with sight lines, so playing with like the blocking of where the character would stand it, it'd make you miss a certain moment, but the audience will all see that moment. So yeah, it's um, it's been really it's been really fine tuned, really fine tuned, which by which with Cal and his background and what he's good at was absolutely perfect for this type of production. Cal has directed it brilliantly. Uh, so blocking providing it's directed very well, it kind of goes in very quickly. Because you if you do it in a very natural way, it sticks. It's only if it feels uncomfortable or unnatural that sometimes you, you don't quite remember it because your brain doesn't want to. Yeah, but, is it, but it, it's all natural. That's, that's as hard as learning your lines, really, learning those moves because the, the timing has to be so precise. One door closing or two doors closing at exactly the same time. So all that timing of farce is an art in itself. So rehearsals, you know, we have to rehearse really, really hard for that. But once it's, once it's done properly, it looks great. These two people, Frank and Beryl, and they take this money and they get one policy and an, like they get two policies, which are worth a ridiculous amount of money, um, just to go and live this life in Cuba and just go and have like the t and like literally like live the twilight years the way they, sh they think they should be lived. Obviously, they can't afford that, so they figure they figure out another particular way of which they can't afford it. It's not something I particularly do myself, just because it just seems like a lot of hard work. To be honest with you, a lot of hard work. I think most of us who do dream of, you know, just getting money off the insurance company and sailing away into the sunset, um, we know it can only be a dream because we're not actually stupid enough to do it. And these people were. 
And so, yes, we're laughing at those people, but we might be laughing at ourselves a little bit, thinking, oh, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. Hello, Frank Tennant speaking. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's weird for me this all the time to be in and it doesn't seem real. It's like when you're playing hide and seek and you think everyone's forgotten about you. <laughs> I'd like to say how much I've enjoyed working with all the actors that uh, that we've got in the show because they're you know um, fantastic. All but one are from Liverpool, and um, and I think they're all quite well known to uh, the audiences here. And it's been it's been fantastic to work and to work with such top class uh, talent. We want to tour this show, and it's very 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 Liverpool. It's very Scouse this show, and and and, it, and, and all the funnier for that. And. I think when we do tour it, some things will, some things might be less funny to audiences outside uh, Liverpool because there's all those little um, idiomatic, you know, the idiomatic humour here. Uh, but there are some things that might be more funny because, you know, Liverpool has always given the world great comedians. People love to hear the accent. It's so conducive to playing comedy. And so no, I think uh, I think I think uh, there'll be some differences if we tour, but uh, generally I think people will will still be laughing really hard. The combination of Calma Crystal's direction, uh, Mike's superb writing, and a great cast uh, that understand comedy, I think it is a really good night out. It's the kind of thing I would like to go and see, and I know that I would laugh a lot. Hear me, hit Smoky Mouse. It'll be a hoot. <laughs> Need to change. We're fine as we are. Come back. I've got to get the squad car back. I'll let you play with me siren. <laughs> It was so much of a farce. Like we come to everything here and it's always good, so um, I just really enjoy everything here. And it was very funny. It's really funny, really enjoying yeah. it. It's great so far, yeah. Yeah, dead funny, make me laugh, you know. I didn't even Google to see what it was about, so I like to watch things and get a shot, you know. So it's a nice surprise, yeah. It's good, yeah, yeah it's gorgeous, yeah, yeah. yeah. enjoying yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, very, very good. good. Very good. Yeah, it's just the comedy, really. It's just, a bit slower first, but then it really built up, and it's gorgeous. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Enjoying it. Hello, Frank Turner speaking. Hello, Frank Turner speaking. Hello, Frank Turner speaking. It's such a packed season. There are sort of five main in-house shows. The first of those is Educating Rita, which I'm directing with Leanne Best, who many of you may know from the Matchbox and lots of fabulous stage work she's done for us over the years here. And Con O'Neill, who was in Willie Russell's Blood Brother and played Mickey and won an Olivier Award for it and has gone on to be a great stage, screen, TV actor that's award-winning in so many levels. So it's an extraordinary moment. It's the 35th anniversary of that play and I'm very privileged to be able to direct it. We've got a new production of Midsummer Night's Dream here at The Everyman, directed by our associate director, Nick Bagnall, who is a great director. He's just started with us as an associate, and he's created great productions that have received great reviews at the RSC, the Royal Shakespeare Company, and at Manchester Royal Exchange, and the Shepherd Crucible, and he's gonna do an anarchic, joyous production, rather in the spirit of Twelfth Night, that opened The Everyman a year ago. The play represents all the things that we're not allowed to be in our normal everyday lives, study of chatting now, which is the troublemaker and the mischief maker and all those things that are actually essential. Um, and the play unlocks that for us. So we've got these creatures who create, you know, enormous amounts of trouble and mischief. And I think that I'm just, I, I feel like that's why the anarchy is in the room for it. And also this theatre, you know, it has a, it has a spirit of anarchy about it. And the clues in the title, it's every man. And I feel like we all can relate to wanting to shout and scream a bit yeah. and uh, yeah, m create mischief.
and they're man, obviously celebrating their first anniversary, aren't they, with yeah. the Shakespeare's Dusty. So no pressure on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, none whatsoever. And also, you know, to do it a year later after Gemma's beautiful production of Twelfth Night, I mean, I don't feel the pressure, actually. I feel like it's a, it's a challenge that I'm well up for and really, really excited about. And I do think, that, you know, that year, the year after Twelfth Night and the opening of the, the new Everyman, I feel, it feels like the perfect choice, actually. Meanwhile, over at the Everyman, we've got an in-house production of it's the centenary of Arthur Miller's birth, and it's a screenplay that was never made because the FBI were demanding that Arthur Miller made changes to it. It was all written in the 50s in 1951 during the McCarthy kind of witch trials, and Miller refused to change it, so it was never made. And this is the first time that anybody will see it in any incarnation. It's being adapted by Ron Hutchinson. It's a co-production with Northampton Theatre, and it's again, it's about the docks. It's going to be a huge ensemble piece with some community support in it to get a real story of unionism in the 1950s in America. It is such a rich season, really, you just need to go online or get um, to do it justice. I think they're really, that awful cliche, there really is something for everybody in that season. My name's Leila Gwynn and I'm currently the volunteer administrator for Company of Friends. It was started in 2008 and I know Paul Lafferty was one of the founding members, certainly really like, important to the beginning of the, the, the group. Um, and it's been going from strength to strength since then. They've been doing um, performances, a couple of performances a year, every year. They've been performing in all sorts of venues. They've been to, um, this year they went to, to New York um, to speak at a conference about learning disabilities. Um, they've performed in uh, the Tate in Liverpool. They performed a piece all about um, art and, um, and costuming. They've performed a couple of times here at the Blackie. Um, they've done Alice. and I think a lot of the pantos happen here because it's a great space for panto. Um, and yeah, they've, they've been going for a very, very long time at this point. Um, so yeah, we're looking to get um, charity status soon. <laughs> it's always easier said than done, but we're working on it. and. Um, yeah, that would be fantastic if we if we could get there because these guys do so much hard work, <laughs> like a ridiculous amount of hard work. My name is Paul Goodsey. I'm a director with Company of Friends, which is a theatre company for people with learning disabilities. There are a lot of theatre companies for people with learning disabilities. Um, there was one in Liverpool called, which is still going, called Wicked Fish, which is very good. Um, some of the group long time in the midst of time they they split up from wicked fish as happens with theater companies and um they formed their own little company called uh, the company of friends or company of friends as it's called now and they got together because they loved acting which is a, which is a, a common you know it's, it's a very good way of um people with learning disabilities expressing themselves creatively imaginatively and it's a social thing as well and they got together it was about five of them and they said, well, what's our policy? And they, they formulated a policy, which is all are welcome. That's what they said. And we slowly developed that into, it's a, on a more serious level, it's about um, the integration of people with learning disabilities into the general society. And drama is a great way of doing that. It's, it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it engages with an audience who might not otherwise you know, meet people with learning disabilities. And it shows what they can do. There tends to be a lot of the when you have to see a lot of shows by people with learning disabilities, the R factor, but we try to promote the wow factor. In the new year, well, we have two projects, hopefully, on the go. Uh, my colleague, Helena, is running a piece called, for the Heritage Lottery, called, um, I think it's called Our Will at the moment, that's the working title. Helena is John Rand's daughter, and John Rand was crucial in forming the company. Um, in the... Uh, 70s, I think it was in the 1970s. He was very. He, he was working for the Home Office, clearing the what were called subnormal homes in those days. Terrible term, but they were. It was taking people out of those homes, taking them off drug regimes, which were keeping them very suppressed, and getting them into the community. That's where we are now. Helena is carrying on the tradition. She is doing a show about about people who were in those homes at one time, based around. Olive Mount, which is in, in Liverpool, in Wavertree, which used to be a workhouse, and then it was, then it was um, a, a place for where people with learning disabilities in those days used to go. And she's forming a whole story based around a character called Will, 
who goes in, is, is baptised in church, local church in Wavertree, and then ends up in one of these homes because he has learning disability. And that's sadly what used to happen. People used to put them in homes. And it's about his life. It's a little bit depressing, and we find some of our company members find he's a little bit, a little bit doer. You know, they don't think, they think they're, they're, they're a happy bunch, and they've had a, they've, most of them had a pretty good life. So it's, it's delving into the past and seeing what went on in those days to get a sense of what's going to happen in the future. That's one project called Our Will. The second thing is we're hoping to um, go to the Enniskillen Festival of Beckett and Samuel, the works of Samuel Beckett. Last year we did a show about Samuel Beckett, based on the works of Samuel Beckett, using none of his text, but it was, a, it was a, based on his work, based on his writings. Uh, they did a great little show which we're trying to export. We took it to New York last year to a conference. This year we're hoping to take it to Enskillen, to the, as I said, to the Beckett Festival. Those two things are two big projects. Everything's a big project with, with company friends. They, you know, they take a long time to rehearse because they've got learning disabilities. It's hard enough to learn to play anyway um, for anybody. So it takes a little bit longer. So they, are, they tend to be big projects.